Good day, night or evening, and welcome back to another Hitbox Analysis video. Today we'll be looking at the second member of the Triforce Trio, that being Zelda. Much like her previously discussed member of the crew, she also have had a bit of a rough time, historically speaking. Often not really having the tools to compete with her Sheikah counterpart, but that's for another time. So why don't we take a look at Zelda's hitboxes and see what's going on with them. If you want to support me and also vote on what characters I should cover next, there's a new poll live on my Patreon right now. In addition, you can also have the option to have your name in the credits of every video I make, should that be of interest. As always, today's hitboxes are made by Zekamiro. There are links to everything in the description. As usual, let's start off with Jab. Zelda's Jab is another one of those jabs that only have a rapid jab variant. The first hit of the move looks like this, with effectively 4 hitboxes, hitting twice and moving a bit forward between the two hits. They have the same damage and attempt to set up into the rapid jabs, which are two quite big hitboxes that stun you in place until the launcher comes out, looking like this, being pretty much the same as the rapid jabs, but these ones actually launch away. Her f tilt is a bit of a strange move. Strange as in, I was not really expecting it to look like it actually does. Zelda does a hand swipe out in front of her, having 5 hitboxes along her arm. The move is quite disjointed, with two of the hitboxes being far out in front of her. The two outermost hitboxes are the most powerful, dealing 15%, while the closer ones are a bit weaker, only dealing 11.5%. In addition, the move can also be angled up or down. The hitboxes are the same, however, only the position of them are changed to fit the angle. Down tilt is a pretty usual low kick attack. It has three hitboxes, all of which are the same, looking like this. They're not too huge, but do last for a nice amount of time. The move launches up and slightly away. It can serve as a good combo starter, and it's not too unsafe either. It's a decent move, if not a little plain. For her up tilt, Zelda does an arm swing over her head. The move starts out in front of her and reaches in an arc all the way to the other side. It has three hitboxes, with the red one being the biggest one, while the two other ones are a bit smaller. Despite this, all the hitboxes deal the same damage knockback, so the size does not really matter for anything else than just range. But I mean that's a pretty good area to matter in to be fair. Dash tech is the usual leap forward and attack we're all so familiar with. In this case the hitboxes are a bit odd in how they are spread out. On the first frame you have two hitboxes, a red one serving as the sweet spot and a purple one being weaker, and despite the red hitbox being small it's pretty easy to hit with, unless the opponent is aerial and moving around. Though to be fair they were not too generous with the sweet spot on this move, seeing how it only lasts for a single frame, and after this it is replaced with a lingering sour spot, which may I note is actually even weaker than the sour spot on the previous frame. It's a decent move, not one of our best, but when it works, I guess it does its job. As for grab, Zelda is one of the few characters that have the unofficial magical grab way of designing grabs, which is to say that they don't actually require her to move her body forward when doing a grab, meaning it is effectively more disjointed than most of the characters. On top of that, her grab range is actually quite good for a character of her size. Her dash grab is also really good, and when it comes to her pivot grab they really went all out. The range on that thing is undeniably great. Despite pivot grabs generally being very situational in ultimate, the raw range here just kinda makes up for it. And and it's actually something she can use in neutral, so it's just a good grab overall. Definitely one of the better ones we've looked at. Moving on to aerials, to start off we have neutral air, and um, it's one of those hitboxes. Right. Saving no expense on the number of hitboxes deployed, the move as you can probably tell is a multi-hit aerial, consisting of 6 hitboxes, with the intent of keeping you inside the move until the launcher comes out. The red and yellow hitboxes are grounded only, meaning it'll only hit opponents who are on the ground, sending you up upon contact, in order to combo into the aerial hitboxes. And the remaining hitboxes are aerial only. They all have separate angles to launch it in towards Zelda. Interestingly enough, the hitboxes behind Zelda are actually slightly weaker, dealing 1% less damage per hit. The hitboxes flicker in and out, in the usual multi-hit fashion, until the Final it activates, being four hitboxes covering, well, pretty much all of Zelda's body and quite a bit more. As with any multi-hit, you kinda have to expect it to not work sometimes, but from what I know it's one of the more consistent ones, so at least that's nice. Ah uh, yes, time to look at our forward and back air. These hitboxes are kinda infamous for being extremely strict if you want to get the sweet spot. The moves are kinda designed around the concept of being very hard to hit, and either being extremely powerful on the sweet spot or borderline useless on the sour spot. Forward air's hitbox looks like this. The red hitbox is the sweet spot, one of the sweetest spots there is to be exact. It covers the area around her shoes and not really a lot more. Should you hit it, it deals an absurd amount of damage and knockback for a move of its stature, but again that's only if you can land it. The three other hitboxes do cover quite a bit of area to be fair, however like I said they don't really do much in terms of covering for the potential missed sweet spot, dealing pitiful damage and almost having no hits done, meaning you'll often get retaliated on even if you land the move. Now if the fact that the sweet spot was just really tiny wasn't enough, it's only active for a single 
single frame, after which it's gone and only these tower spots remain. At least they do linger for a few frames, meaning you might be able to catch people off stage or in the air with it, and not get punished afterwards. But yeah, the movie is definitely unique from a design perspective. Generally in Smash, high risk, high reward moves have never been great, and the fact that these moves are like this might be a contributing factor to why Zelda is low tier in like every game she appears in. It's a fun concept for an aerial, but in practice doesn't really work out too well in my opinion. I think she would be much better off having normal side aerials. Now back here is pretty much the same story as forward air, having the same arrangement of hitboxes with the tiny sweet spot dealing tons of damage. It deals the same damage, however the backer actually does kill slightly earlier, having a bit more knockback to it, but not that much. It has the same problems as mentioned earlier, just in the other direction, which is not enough to change much I'm afraid. Though to be fair I do like that not every character has to be so two-dimensional in the way they're designed, so having some more out there designs is always fun. It's what makes me like characters like Lil Mac and stuff, because after all when the risk and the rewards are further apart, the reward is all the more sweeter. Now moving on to up air, which is quite a simple move. It's just a single hitbox over Zelda. Now granted it's a huge one and disjointed does not even really begin to describe it. It lingers for a nice amount of time and packs quite a punch as well. I really don't have too much to say about it. I guess I could kinda go into how the fact that it hits so high kinda makes Zelda's immediate coverage area a bit tricky, with all of her aerials being kinda bad at covering close ranges. But then I remember that she has neutral beef, so I mean it's not like it's that much of a problem. Zelda's downer is probably one of the most deceptively good spikes in the game. On the first frame it has two hitboxes that both spike. These are the most powerful ones and spike similarly to how any other spike would, sending directly down and not lasting for too long, only staying out here for one frame. However, unlike most other spikes, the lingering frames still spike. While they are significantly weaker, they do still send down and cause hit stun, which a lot of the time is enough to take out most characters that don't have the greatest recovery. They stick around for a long time too, and send down for the whole duration of the move. While it might not feel as good as getting the big dopamine shot from hitting the sweet spot, these sour spots might just do the job nonetheless. Again, kind of deceptive how good it is. Also, just have to mention the little jig the red hitbox is doing while lingering. I don't really get why it does that. I guess he's just kinda grooving. So for our four specials of the night, we'll be starting off with Faror's Wind, being a teleporting move, though unlike most others, this one actually has hitboxes. The move actually has different hitboxes depending on if you're on the ground or in the air. On the first frame we have a single hitbox covering nearly all of Zelda and a bit to her sides. The move sends upwards at an unforgiving 91 degree angle, giving you little room to the eye. The aerial starter looks like this, now covering all of Zelda, but not as much to her sides. This version has a way more volatile angle, meaning comboing into something afterward is much harder. When it comes to the second part of the move, there are once again two variations depending on if she's grounded or aerial. The aerial version looks like this, here the red hitbox is the strongest, and the purple one is a bit weaker, though both will do a number on you, especially with how much closer you are to the blast zone after being launched up. The grounded one is pretty much the same, but it's just a little weaker and has a slightly smaller hitbox as well. And just to keep the record straight here, it's not dependent on where you are when you use the first part, but rather where you are when you reappear, so most of the time you'll get in the aerial version, since the grounded part 1 is the one that combos into part 2 aerial, if that makes any sense. Either way, it's a good recovery tool and does even have some kill options if you can catch your opponent off guard. Side B is Din's Fire, which is a projectile being shot out in front of Zelda. After firing the projectile, you can control its trajectory to some extent, and when you release the move it explodes. Depending on how long you hold the move down, it's stronger and the explosion becomes bigger. The size of the explosion ranges from the smallest size with no charge, and to the biggest when held down all the way. Here you can see a visual of both the minimum and the maximum charge respectively. Keep in mind that the distance is not 100% accurate here, but the actual hitbox is to scale however. It's a pretty good projectile for sniping people off stage, but outside of that you might have a hard time finding too much of a use for it. Alright, let's have a look at Down B. I've been looking forward to this. Her down special is the Phantom. Honestly, a move that is way better than it has any right to be. Zelda builds a Phantom, and depending on where during the charge you release, you can get five different versions of the phantom attack. The first is phantom kick, where the phantom is sent forward and does a little kick. As you might expect with it being the weakest, it does not exactly do that much and is situational to say the least. Next is phantom punch, which upgrades you to two hitboxes on the phantom's fists, and in addition, from now on you also have pretty strong wind boxes pushing you back, that being the blue hitboxes you can see here. Naturally this makes the moves easier to hit, and not just pass through the opponent. Next up is Phantom Swing 1, the first move to actually use the sword. The Phantom swings their sword out in front of them, and the hitboxes here are no joke, being 4 huge hitboxes covering his already huge sword. It is not the strongest one, but still nothing to be trifled with. Phantom Swing 2 is a downward swing of the sword, with hitboxes similar to the previous swing, so naturally also being really big. The swing is also a bit stronger, though not quite as strong as Phantom Swing 3, the final iteration of the move. Here the Phantom thrusts the blade forward and then brings it back up, having tons of active frames along the swing. The final version can also be held and released while still the moves around as well, making it a strong pressure tool. It's just a very strong move, definitely one of the best ones she has. 
Moving on to another online oppressive Zelda special move, we have Nairu's Love. Zelda creates a shield around her that harms opponents and reflects projectiles. If that was not enough, she's also completely intangible during a lot of the move, meaning challenging the move is pretty much pointless in most situations. It has two hitboxes, the purple one is the weaker, and has more reach, while the red one is smaller but stronger. It overlaps with the blue reflector hitbox, so it's kinda hard to see, but it's there. The hitboxes kinda try to keep you within the move until the launcher comes out, which sends you back a bit. It's not super strong, but does provide some very needed defensive options for Zelda when pressured. At least the move does have a bit of lag, so it's not impossible to punish, but it's definitely a move you have to be aware of. And if there's input lag involved, you can just kind of give up beating it a lot of the time. And as always, we'll close out with Smash Tax, where we have Up Smash. It's a multi-hit consisting of no less than six hitboxes. The red hitbox hits both grounded and aerial opponents, while the four overlapping hitboxes to the sides have one that hits grounded and aerial individually, having slightly different angles and knockback. They all hit a few times before the active frames go away for one frame. When they return, they are a bit weaker, dealing less damage, but nothing else has changed. Finally, the launcher activates, which is really massive, consisting of four hitboxes. F Smash is pretty similar, being another multi-hit magical attack. This one is a lot simpler, just consisting of two hitboxes. The move reaches out quite a bit in front of Zelda, giving it some nice disjointedness. The two hitboxes are the same, with both of them just trying to keep you within the move and dealing the same damage. And in the end, they just launch you away, dealing notably more damage. And the hitboxes are quite bigger as well. It's a pretty strong move though. Kills early and might be hard to punish sometimes because of the pushback and disjointed nature of the move. Lastly, we have Down Smash, which is a kick, kinda going against the theme we had going on here. It's always kinda stuck out to me as a bit of a weird move, like it's not even a magically charged kick or anything. It's just a normal kick, but I guess sometimes you just need a normal kick to do the job. On the first active frame she has two hitboxes, one on her leg and one on her foot, and granted a bit more out in front of her as well. They both deal the same damage, but have drastically different angles. However, because of how the red hitbox is the highest priority, you'll be getting the sharper angle most of the time. On the other side it's exactly the same, except these hitboxes are a bit weaker. And that will do it for Zelda. Technically, I guess she's only half of the characters that have the Triforce of Wisdom, but bygone are the days of her and Sheik sharing the same character, so I guess that'll have to wait for another time. As for Zelda, she's always kind of been a weird character, always changing a lot throughout the games she's been in. While I do believe that a lot of her overall design philosophy is holding her back competitively, I also think it's okay to have some characters that are a bit more out there. It keeps the game fun, and it's not like she has nothing to work with. So while I don't see her being the best anytime soon, I guess stranger things have happened. So, Anyways, that will do it for now, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.